Hello everyone, happy Thursday. I'm April Davis, I'm an independent demonstrator in Spring Hill, Kansas, and I'm so excited to have you joining me tonight for my to-go class. I'm double checking, it's interesting, the, um, the lag time is um, a little slow, and so um, I've noticed recently that I let the banner go for just a bit, and then I come on, I'm thinking 20, 30 seconds, and yet when I go to look at my video, part of me is cut off. You didn't catch the first part of it. So just in case it gets cut off again, um, I'm April Davis with April Davis Creations. Again, I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator in Spring Hill, Kansas. This is Thursday evening, June 6th, and this is a to-go class. So let me get started on um, just the updates so we can get to the cards because I'm excited to share the cards with you tonight. But um, a few things that I need to tell you about or remind you about. So let me see if I can get this to work. Yes, absolutely. So June the 5th started our 10% um, off bundle sale. So you autom automatically get 10% when you buy a stamp and a die set together as a bundle. You automatically get a 10% savings. Stampin' Up! is running a special through the month of June for an additional 10% off of your bundles, which is just an amazing deal. And not only are you getting 10% off your bundles, but you're also getting 10% off of your die cutting machines. So if you um, had that cut and emboss in um, on your wish list, the big one and or the mini, either one of them, you can save 10% on that. All right, let's go to the next thing. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of jump around just a little bit and I'm going to bring you back to my desktop because what I wanna do is I wanna be able to show you the um, Create Happiness Club that um, I've got going for the month of July. So registration is open through June the 10th. I'm featuring the Country Bird House stamp set, die set, and then it also includes the Country Woods paper. You're going to get a 6x12 pack. I'm just going to cut this in half. A 6x12 pack is part of your kit, and then you're also going to get a full pack of the opaque faceted gems to utilize, so you can make these so cute cards. Um, let me show you. So here's one of them that you can make. You'll get the kit, so you have to have the bundle, but um, I will cut the kit for you, and then you, with your bundle, you'll cut um, the various pieces out of the cardstock that you're provided. Aren't these cute, though? Oh my gosh, I had so much fun with these. A lot of demonstrators inspired me, and um, I just love the way that these turned out. So you're gonna get four cards, plus, you're going to get um, a 3D project. It's a little um, treat box that you can put little treats in, but of course it is a birdhouse as well. So that all comes in your Create Happiness Club for July. It is a subscription club. You're going to receive not only everything that you need to create your um, cards and your 3D project, but you're also going to get um, a tutorial and you're gonna get recorded videos for each one of the cards and the 3D project. So I wanted to make sure to let you know about that because registration for that ends on um, June the 10th. So I'm gonna bring you back to my website or my computer, which I don't know if you guys noticed, but I am using my computer instead of flip-flopping through pages today. I did switch it out. I, I, I took the one out of my office and just switched it out um, so I can show you these things in real time. So everything else I wanna talk about is on my website, aprildaviscreations.com. If you come over here to clubs and classes, the first thing I wanna talk about is this is a to-go class, which means that if you like the cards that I make tonight, then you can actually get the kit for free. Let me see if I can scroll down here. You actually get the kit for free um, with um, an order placed in my online store. So a $40 order will get you the kit for free. You get three cards, two of each card, everything you need. All you need is the um, Spotlight on Nature bundle. 
And um, I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and fess up right now. When I created these cards, I created them several weeks ago. Um, right now, the dies for this bundle are not available. They're expected to be available June the 24th. I'm so sorry, guys, don't hate me, please. I didn't know when I was creating these cards for tonight that that was gonna happen, but it tells you how um, how popular these dies are. But I've got a workaround for you that I'm gonna show you. I'm still gonna show you with the dies, but I'm gonna show you what you can do as a result. The stamps are still available, but Spotlight in Nature um, is the kit, the to-go class tonight. And then the only other thing I wanted to point out and I'll put this up on the screen later, but when you place your order, be sure to use the hostess code. You can find the hostess code, obviously, here on my website, but when you place your order with the hostess code, that tells me that you're interested in the kit for free, and I'll get you on my list, and um, registration closes on the 10th, and I'll have the kits cut and in the mail to you by the 12th. All right back up here to clubs and classes. The next thing, remember we just talked about the Create Happiness Club, but I just wanted to point out to you that all the information for the Create Happiness Club is here, including where you can register. And if you're interested, um, I have a PDF for it, just the PDF and you can purchase that as well. If you're not interested in the entire kit, maybe you're a demonstrator, but you'd like the PDF. So I've got that. And then last but not least, I wanna talk about Crafting Crossroads. This is the technique class that um, I'm working on with Tina Kovarczyk in um, Canada. She's the Northern Stamper. And um, we've got, we counted them, 41 different techniques that we're gonna be sharing with you during this class. It's gonna be on Facebook, Things will be recorded. You'll have printouts, everything you need, including some of the product and tools that you're gonna need in order to create or work these techniques up so you can create your own little portfolio of these techniques that you can refer back to. Pointing this out, even though I know it's September and September's a ways off, we do have an early bird special that closes on June 15th. So um, the price does go up after June 15th. So again, if you're interested, you could go out to my web page, click on register, and that will get you in. All right, now let me come back to you. And tonight we are focused on, let me pull this stuff back over. We're gonna be focusing on the Spotlight on Nature um, stamp set. This stamp set is just so, so sweet. And I, I just love it so much. I'm gonna bring you back down. Let me see, um, here, and I'm gonna take this down and I'm gonna bring this over, yay. Such a sweet stamp set. And I can't wait to show you the, the cards that I've got for this. Um, but again, I need to remind you that the dies, and these dies, they're pretty cool. The dies that come with this stamp set are not available right now. They will be available um, June 24th. And actually, check before that. If you go out to the Stampin' Up! site, you can check to see if they're um, orderable. And I found just recently that a couple of the things that I was waiting on actually came in early. So it's possible that these will come in early. But we'll talk about these here in just a second. I'm gonna pull this one out because I wanna demonstrate it here in just a minute. Um, but we're utilizing that. We're gonna be utilizing some of the dies out of the Unbound Nature, uh, Nature, the Unbound Love, um, stamp set, but we're going to be utilizing some of the dies. And then I also want to show you that I'm utilizing the Country Lace Designer Series paper. This paper is kind of like the Country Woods paper. I mean, I just, I just love it. But um, it, it's just, it's just so subtle and so, I don't know, it, it just makes me happy. I And I, you'll see what I mean when you see the cards that I've created with this but I love this paper um, just about as much as I love the Country Woods paper. And this paper is available. Actually, the Country Woods paper is back as well. So we're gonna be utilizing this too. So let me bring this over for just a second and I'll start showing you the cards. All right, so here's card number one that we're gonna make. Isn't that pretty? Then we've got card number two and then we have card number three. I just love these, just love them. So we're gonna start with card number one. I'm gonna bring in what the kit 
includes, and the kit includes um, cardstock that is basic beige. This is a new color. Hi, Mom. Good to see you. Thanks for joining. Um, this is a new color um, with the new catalog, and, and I love this color. It's so subtle, and of course, I've got the designer series paper that is part of the country lace. Then we've got a strip of designer series paper we're going to utilize. I've got the die, the label already cut out. Um, that we're going to stamp on, but I'm going to show you something here in just a second. And then we're also going to do an inside to this card. So these are all the pieces that we have. And I'm just going to show you really quickly um, with respect to the die. This is the die that obviously comes with the um, spotlight on nature. And I don't know if you guys can see or not. I love these dies. I really do. Look at the cut that you get. Let me see if I can get it over here. Whoops, I'm trying to work the camera. The cut you get. The problem is with the cut that you get, little pieces get stuck in here. And I just wanna show you, because it can be frustrating if you're just gonna to try to pick out each and every one. But remember, our Take Your Pick has um, an attachment that has a brush on it. And with the brush, you also um, get the, the foam mat. So now all you have to do is turn your die over and run your brush along the top of it. It only takes a matter of seconds, literally, to brush over your die. All those little pieces fall out. And then what you can do is you can just take this little foam mat that we've got and you can take it over to your um, trash bin and drop it in the trash bin. I'm trying to be careful. You could just set it down there and do it. I'm just picking it up. But I've got all of those pieces out now. Oh, here's a stray one that I just found. But all of those pieces are out now. They're all collected here with the exception of maybe one or two that flew. I'm gonna go over to the bin, drop those off in the bin. And with the exception of that, just one stray one, it's all nice and clean. I can set this off to the side and this die is ready to use. Now, the good news is, is I've already used it. But remember I talked about the fact that these dies right now are not available until the uh, 24th. So what you can do is if you've got your handy dandy set of the stylish shape dies, you can use the larger circle on the side of the shape dies and it's not quite as big as the other die, but you can still have the same effect. Cut out your flowers and cut them off the way that I've done on this. And we're gonna do that in just a second, but you'll be able to create this card. So work with what you've got. Just because the dies aren't available right now doesn't mean that you can't create this card. All right, so let me move this off to the side just so that we can get working on this. So the first thing I'm gonna do, since this is already cut, and let me see, I think I'm missing a piece. Um, let me look at my little, my label. Oh, here it is. I knew I was missing something. I have a little label for my sentiment. All right, so let's go ahead and stamp. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring out the Basic Beige ink. This is a very, very light ink, as you can see. And so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take our stamp and we're gonna ink it up with the basic beige. And I don't need my mat because I'm using rubber stamps and the rubber stamps already have a cushion. Since this is a big stamp, I'm just gonna turn my stamp pad over and I'm gonna stamp from the back side, if you will. Make sure I get it all coated. And then I'm gonna decide where I want my flowers to, to lie because I'm gonna cut off the left side, I'm gonna bring my flowers over just a little bit so that I don't end up cutting them off. And once I'm happy with where I've placed it, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp down. Give it just a second to transfer. And now we've got our image stamped. I'm gonna clean my stamp off, let that dry for just a second. And then I've got another stamp that I'm gonna bring in that is going to give me all my little speckles. So in this set, you have a stamp, as you can see, it's just got some speckles on it. Kind of just adds a little bit of um, excitement to <laughs> the white 
area. So I'm just gonna stamp off in just different places. There's no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. I'm just stamping off. I am turning my stamp periodically just so that it doesn't look like everything's going all the same way. But, you know, just continue to stamp off. And we'll get a little bit here and a little bit here. Let me see, maybe some up here and maybe a little bit up here. Okay, so I think I'm good. I think I'm gonna stop there, I think, or maybe not. Maybe, maybe I wanna put a little bit more right here. Yeah, I like that. I like that, a little bit more right here. You can get carried away. I, I very often do, but we're gonna stop there. Okay, so the next step is to color in our flowers. I'm gonna bring out the Misty Moonlight and I am going to bring out my water painter. Now, Stampin' Up! in the catalog has water painters. There are three water painters. They come in three different sizes. I think I have two of them here. The other one's at my counter where I work. But this is, this is a larger brush. We're not gonna use the larger brush. This is a smaller, more pointed brush. So this is the one that we're gonna to use to paint these flowers. But basically what you do is you, let me see, you fill the brush with water here, and then when you get ready to paint or do your technique, all you have to do is squeeze your water. So I'm actually gonna use my glass mat, and the glass mat will be available to customers starting in July, but I'm just gonna tap off just a little bit of ink, okay? If I need more, I can always come back and get it. I'm gonna take my water painter, squid a little bit of water here, and I'm gonna mix it up. I love being able to use the glass mat for this. I want this to be very, very subtle. So I'm gonna get a little bit more water. Because I'm using the basic beige ink, I don't want my blue to overpower my basic beige. So basically, now that I've got some in my brush, I'm going to just start to do some painting. And the the bulk of it, the darker part, I should say, is going to be at the end or the bottom of the flower. That's where kind of the shadowing is. And then what I'll do is I'll even mix more water into it to lighten it up even more. And then I'll start to pull that color forward. And it should be very light because I don't want it to wash away the basic beige that I'm using for my um, main color. Now, it, I probably wouldn't have to be so careful if I was using um, black, but I didn't use black. I like the beige and I like the light color to it. And if I want it to be a little bit darker at the bottoms a little bit more, I'm gonna come back over and pick up some of this darker color and then I can pull in some more color if I choose to. So I'm just gonna kind of pull in a little bit of color here and there, and then it does dry lighter um, as it dries. So let's finish that one up, and then I'm gonna pull in this one, and I'm just gonna do this for those three flowers. I'm not gonna worry about um, the greenery or you know the stems, I'm not gonna worry about those. They are the basic beige, and they look good, but I am going to bring in some color for um, the flowers. And then once I get, you know, my color down at the bottom here, I'm going to go back in here and pull up some more of the color. But now it's going to be a lot lighter. And I'm trying to just do it in little strokes. I don't want to get too heavy handed with it. Bring in some more color. A little white space is fine. Let me see if I can bring in just a little bit more of the dark down here at the bottom, a little bit. Okay, and then I've got one more over here I'm going to address. And some lighter color here. Thanks, Mom, I love this stamp. All right. There we go. So we're just gonna let that dry. But isn't that pretty how that works? And let me see, I, I want a little bit of dark color over here. I'm trying to be careful because I don't want to get too much, but I want it to kind of have the dark color down at the bottom. 
All right, so we're gonna let that dry. I'm gonna clean my brush up just by squeezing some water. It's all nice and clean now. I can put this up and then I'm gonna get out my little chamois that I use and I'm gonna clean this mess up. And now I'm ready to continue working. Easy peasy. Okay, so next step, we're gonna start. Oh, we do have one more thing that we have to stamp and that's the Dear Friends. So while my Misty Moonlight is still out, I'm gonna go ahead and pick up my Dear Friend stamp. Tap, tap, tap. And I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. I don't know that you guys can see. I don't wanna get my head in the way. I'm going to try to center this as best I can. Uh, I think this is good. So we're gonna go straight down and up. Yep, now we have Dear Friend. So we've got that part done. And we'll close this up. All right, now let's start to put this together. So we're gonna bring the card base in and fold it. Make sure my ends are even. I'm gonna take my bone folder and just burnish those ends. We're gonna take the designer series paper. I just wanna make sure this is straight. I feel like it's off just like a teeny tiny little bit. So we're gonna do it one more time. Okay, now we're gonna take the designer series paper and we're gonna glue it down. Oh, we're not gonna glue it down. I'm thinking out loud. Uh, we're going to bring over, is my silicone mat over here? I'm just gonna take this off. I don't want to glue this down yet because I want to be able to cut off my um, design. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the other designer series paper and we're gonna glue it down. So we'll do that. So getting ahead of myself. And then I'm thinking through the process and I'm like, mm, nope, not time to do that just yet. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll get this just off to the side. It doesn't have to be even all the way around. I just want to maybe make it even top and bottom and then off to the side, just a little bit over here. Try to squeeze that over. Okay, now we're going to take our flowers and we're gonna put some dimensionals on the back of it. And actually, let me see. How do I wanna do this? I'm gonna center this right about here. So I think what I'm gonna do um, is I'm just gonna put my dimensionals on my strip of designer series paper. And then I can put my um, flowers on top of that. So again, I think we're gonna go right here and here. And then let me see, I'm gonna see how far down I can go about here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do some right in the center. You could put them on the back, but then you've gotta figure out if you're gonna be going over. And this way I can just do it and place this down. And I've got one little one that I need to go on the edge over here and we're good. Okay, so let's go ahead and use my take your pick and get the backs of these off. So easy. And then we'll take this one off as well. And now I'm just gonna line this up. Let's see, I want it right about here, I think. Looks good. And then I'll take my snips. And now what I'm gonna do is right along this edge, I'm gonna cut the, the, the edge of the uh, circle off. There you go. Okay, so now I can take this and I can adhere it to my card base. Get this lined up, make sure it's opening right. And I, I cut this just like an eighth of an inch from the edge. So just a little bit of the 
basic beige is showing through. And then I've got my little sentiment here and it's already been stamped. So I'm gonna bring out some, um, let me see if the big dimensionals will work first. They might be too big though, but we'll see. Oh no, they're gonna be fine. All right, so we'll do big dimensionals for the sentiment. Put those off to the side, get the backs off. And we'll go ahead and put our sentiment down. Probably right about here. I wanna make sure it's straight. So I'm gonna pick it up before I push it down all the way. That looks good. And last but not least, I'm gonna bring in some tinsel gems. Open. And we're just going to add a little bling to it. So take my take your pick and pick up a few of these. Let me see, we'll put one here and one here maybe. And then another little one right here with the, the flowers. All right, put this off to the side. And card number one is done. So easy, so pretty. And again, if you don't have these dies, you can do it with your stylus shape dies. The exact same thing. It's gonna be so pretty. All right, so let's go ahead. Oh, I did tell you I was gonna do the inside, didn't I? All right, well, let's go ahead and do the inside before we move along. Remember, we've got this little bitty strip of uh, scrap. I'm like, let's not waste this scrap. It is a scrap, but let's go ahead and utilize it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some glue on the back of it. And then we're going to adhere it to my inside of my card. Let me move this up so that I get it uh, centered fairly well. Thank goodness for my glue. My glue helps me to get things lined up appropriately before they actually stick down. Okay, so we've got that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that same technique again. Where is my basic beige? Let's pull the basic beige in. This time I have a butterfly. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and tap the butterfly and I'm going to stamp the butterfly up here on the corner. Okay, and we can do the exact same thing that we did before, or we can leave the butterfly as it is. Since um, I've already cleaned up and we're done with the painting, I can just leave it like it is, and I think it still makes a statement. So we can go ahead and put this on the inside of this card, and we have our flowers. If I can get this open on the inside. And I may decide to stamp another sentiment, so I'm not going to adhere it today, but it'll be waiting. This one I did um, color in the butterfly so you can see what it looks like with the butterfly colored. If I'm being honest, I kind of like the detail of the butterfly better without the coloring, but um, you could do, you could color your butterfly as well. All right, now we're done with card number one. Let's look at card number two. All right. Here we have card number two. Card number two is also utilizing the, the dies, only this is a different one. I'm just gonna show it to you. But you can see with these dies, they have, there's a lot of them. And they come in different sizes and different cutouts. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one back. But the one that we're gonna utilize on the, the card that I'm gonna make now is this one. Let me see if I can even get this one picked up. All right, so let's go ahead and get those put away. I've, I'll pull out the kit because I, I believe I've already got the die cut. But I have a card base. I have two actually, I'm not sure why I have two. I have um, a, a basic white layer and then I have the circle die that we just cut out. I'll put it over here so that you can see a little bit of it. And then I also have, is there anything else in here? There should be, oh yes, there is another little circle die that I've cut out. Now this circle die, I believe came from the Unbounded Love set. 
And remember I said we were gonna use a couple of these dies. It actually is right here. So we were utilizing that one. And actually the little label that I did on the previous card that I cut, let me show you again. This one cut this particular label. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in as well. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna do some embossing. And I am going to bring out my circle and dots die, or excuse me, embossing folder. This is a huge embossing folder. Hopefully you guys can see this. Um, I'm looking to see if there's a way for me to make it easier. No, well maybe, you guys can see it this way. Um, I love this embossing folder, and what we're gonna do with it is is a clear space for me. We are going to emboss the layer for this card. So I'm gonna bring, I have to bring over the big cut and emboss because this die, or excuse me, embossing folder is so big. And let me bring over my sandwich plate. All we're gonna need to emboss is plate number one and then plate number four. So let's go ahead and get this open. I'm gonna move stuff out of the way our sandwich ready to go and what I'm gonna do I only want to emboss part of this card just part of it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place it in here and I line things up with this line and then I'm only gonna uh, let me see how much do I want to have embossed how much do I want to have showing maybe maybe that much showing that isn't embossed so because I only want part of it embossed, the rest of it's gonna be left out. So what I'll do, it may be I'm gonna move it up. I was gonna line this up, but I'm kind of looking at how this circle flows, and I really want that circle to be in the middle of my card. So I'm, I'm kind of looking again. I wanna make sure it's straight. But I think that's how I'm gonna go. All right, so now we can go ahead uh, all right, I gotta think about this. How did I do this before? Um, I, have, I, I went, <laughs> guess how I did this? I had to turn it this way. All right, same difference. I still have my circles going here, but I had to turn it this way because it was too wide the other way. See, I told you I made these cards a few weeks ago. I forget how, how I did things. Okay, now we're good. I've got this side open. It's gonna fit. I can put it in here like this. We're gonna run it through. All right, got this. Let me get this out of the way. There we go. And the sandwich is out of the way. And then we'll open this up and you can see how this has been embossed. And yes, we do have a little open area here, but it's gonna be hidden by this label or this circle. So we've got the embossing all around for interest. How, that is so cool. Okay, let me move this off to the side because now we need to do some stamping. We're gonna stamp the same flower in Memento ink this time instead of the gray. So let me get this open. We're gonna go ahead and get this stamped. Turn it around. I wanna make sure I get it inked up well. Okay. And then I'm gonna arrange my flower the way that I want it on my, do I want it straight? Do I want it angled a little bit? Maybe just a little bit like this. All right, so we'll go ahead and stamp this. Make sure I get good connection. Very good, nice little stamp there. We'll go ahead and we'll clean this off the mat. Not a problem. And then while I've got this out, I'll just clean my stamp too. I used to clean my um, glass mat, but you can use it to clean your stamps as well. It's a chamois. You want to use it to clean. All right, so we've got that all cleaned. We'll move this off to the side. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my Stampin' Blend markers. 
I have two different ones. I've got the Highland Heather, the light and the dark. And then I also have um, the Mossy Meadow, the light and the dark. So let's go ahead and we're gonna do some quick coloring. I like to color with the bullet tip. So let's go ahead and get this done. I have been working on um, the techniques. And so I feel like I've been coloring for several hours now. Um, but we're, some of the techniques are going to include colored pencils. Um, I have to tell you, I can't show it to you right now, but I have to tell you that um, these cards are amazing. The techniques are fun but it's crazy what you can do. And we're kind of going, um, I don't wanna say we're going outside the box, but these are techniques that you probably um, haven't seen, at least me, do in the past. And I'm not even sure about Tina, but um, I, I was having so much fun because I hadn't done it before and I just kept creating so that I could come up with the best um, example for you. But it was like, oh, that's cool, let me try this. Oh, that's cool, let me try this. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the, um, the dark Highland Heather, and I'm just gonna kind of go along the shading that the stamp has already done for us, just to give us a little bit of darkness to the um, flower. And I don't really have to color, I just have to kind of uh, flick, if you will, my um, stamp and blend. All right, so we've got that. And then let's do this one. And I'm gonna stop there with that. And we're gonna go ahead and get our leaves done. I'm gonna do the, the exact same way. I'm gonna go ahead and do the light. And I've got my little stem here. So I'm gonna do the oh, the oh so lightest touch so that I can get my stem without making it too fat. And then we'll do this. A little bit here, a little bit here. Oh, light, 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 light. Okay. This one. And then all I'll need to do is, um, Add a little bit of highlighting to this with my darker color. And we've just got a little bit at the top, a little bit all the way through. Again, I'm just kind of flicking, not, um, I, there's no method to my bandits. I'm just kind of following these lines and I'm not even following all of them. I'm just giving it a little bit of highlight. So we've got that, one more, and we're good. All right, that's colored. Done. One more stamp we need to do, and that is for our sentiment. Where did my circle go? Um, I moved stuff out of the way so that it wouldn't be in my way, and because I moved it out of the way, now I can't find it. Oh my goodness, this place is not that big, and I can't find my little circle. Um, did you guys see it? Where did it go? I don't think I dropped it. Moving it out of the way. If if I can't find it, we're gonna improvise because I can't. So I would, you know how normally I tend to do something different just because just because I do. Um, I really with these cards that um, I created a few weeks ago, I didn't really. I can't find my circle. It was just here. I can't find it. So I'll find it once I start cleaning stuff up. Um, but since I can't find it, we are going to improvise and I'm going to take my thanks and I'm just going to stamp it right on my card before we add the, um, before we add the twine. So I've got thanks here. We're just going to do it right here. I'm going to do it right down here in the corner. Oh, little cricket. That's okay. We've got thanks here. And then um, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this off. Kind of tilting a little bit. Now, if I could find that circle, 
I want to spend all my time looking for it though, because I want to create with you guys. I don't know where it went. I really, really don't know where it went. It's not in here. <laughs> I don't know, guys. All right, that's okay. We're going to improvise. Now what I'm going to do, oh, you know what? I didn't put that down yet. Okay, good. We're going to take the linen thread and we are going to wrap it around this piece a couple of times and then we're going to tie a bow. So we're going to wrap it once, we're going to wrap it twice, we're going to wrap it again, and I'm going to tie a bow right over here. So I'm going to snip this off with my ribbon snips and get this set up so that I can tie a bow here. And the first thing I'm going to do just to make it easier is I'm going to tie a knot so that my twine isn't slipping around. So once I've got this, I'm going to go ahead and get my knot tied and then I can tie my bow on top of that. And not to worry, it's not ex in the exact location that I want it in. That's okay because I can move it. So let me just go ahead and get this built. And then what we can do now that I've got my bow is we will bend our card stock so that we can move this bow around. So let me see, I think I want it just a little bit smaller. It's kind of big. And then I can trim off the edges here in just a second. But now I've got my bow, still a little bit big, a little bit big. Give me just a second, there we go. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bend this and it's gonna allow me to move my twine over. So I wanna get it to where I want it. I need some space here. For this, I need to move it over just a tad bit more. So we're gonna get it right towards the edge. I'll get it placed where I need it. We'll trim it up here in just a sec. I just wanna get it placed first. Now what I can do is I can take my flowers and I'm gonna put dimensionals behind them and we'll get those placed. So let me bring in my dimensionals. And let me see, I've got a couple that I can use. I'm, I'm running out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these two and then I don't waste dimensionals. Oh, here's another one. Oh, and here's another one. Huh? More than I thought I had. Well, gosh, I'll show you on the next one because I'm sure I'm going to need it, but I don't waste the dimensionals. Once I've utilized what is um, no longer here, I start cutting the edges and, and utilizing those. I'm going to do one more here. So I've got quite a few on here tonight. So let's just pop those off. You don't need to use as many. I just want stability and I don't want any sag. So, but you can get by just using a few if you choose to. I tend to go a little overboard with the dimensionals, but it's just personal preference. All right, and the other reason I do that is because we've got bumps here and I wanna just make sure that we are able to connect um, well. So I'm gonna turn this the way that I want it to lay. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this down, okay? And then I'm gonna take my ribbon snips and I'm gonna trim off my ribbon or my um, twine just a little bit so it's not quite so long. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to adhere it to our card base, which I did not lose the card base, I just lost the circle, which might still show up, we'll see. Um, not seeing it yet. All right, I have an extra card base though. All right, so now what we're gonna do is go ahead and fold this over and get it burnished. And again, we're going to put dimensionals on this. Maybe not, maybe, maybe I'm just gonna put it down the way it is. I'm just gonna put it down the way it is. All right, so we'll get plenty enough glue on here. Especially since this has been embossed, there's going to be little dips that um, may not adhere to the card just because of that. So you wanna have plenty of glue. So we'll go ahead and get this lined up and centered the way that I want it. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is bring in some more bling and I think I'm going to use, these are called adhesive backed pearl trio. 
I think I'm gonna use these iridescent ones. I mean, they're all iridescent, but this is kind of a, a purple iridescent. That one's sticking on my finger. So I'm gonna put one up here. I'm gonna do another one down here. And then I'm gonna do the last one over here. Okay, move these out of the way. And we now, I have some extra pearls that have decided to stay with me. Let me move those out of the way. And we have card number two that's done. Mine is the circle, but still cute. Still cute. And if I find the circle, which I probably will, I'm going to put it over this. Thanks. So I'm still going to save it, but <laughs> um, you won't be able to see my crooked things, my, my tilted things, because I'm going to put the circle right there to hide that. All right. Card number two. Let's go to card number three. Card number three is going to be fun because we're going to do some ink blending with it. So with this card, you have your card base, you have your designer series paper, and this is pretty in pink. Um, then we have another layer of basic white, and then I've got our sentiment that we're going to stamp. And I wanted to show this to you because this is cut out of, let me find my stamp set, the um, Unbounded Love. I think I showed this last week, but I wanted to show it again. We are utilizing this die, and I don't know if you can see or not. I know it's kind of hard to see, but there's actually two cut lines. There's the curved edge cut line, and then there's an inside cut line. So when you actually cut this out, you get two cuts. You get the inside and you get the outside. So we're gonna save the outside, and I'm gonna put it in here with my dies and set this off to the side. And we're actually going to use the inside. No, we're, I'm saving the inside, we're gonna use the outside. But before we do any stamping, we've gotta do some color blending. So I'm gonna bring in the Pretty in Pink. I'm also going to bring in my blending brush. Stampin' Up! has blending brushes. And then what I'm going to bring in is some masking tape. Now, this masking tape is not a Stampin' Up! product. I picked it up at probably a crafting store or maybe I got it off of um, Amazon. I really don't remember. You can use um, washi tape, wide washi tape. You can use... Um, I have some white washi tape here. I'm not going to use it, but just as an example of what you could use. White washi tape. You can use painter's tape. I'm just using my masking tape because it's what I've got, but I'm going to fold it in half. I'm going to fold it in half. The sticky side is here. The reason that I'm doing that is I'm actually going to just cut it in half. So let me go ahead and get this cut in half to start or close to cut in half. It's not going to be perfect as you can see. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mask this off. And I'm gonna line it up on my grid, on my um, glass mat. And I'm going to, uh, where do I want this to go? Probably maybe right here. So I'm gonna line it up with the grid there and I'm gonna do the same at this end. So it's all lined up and straight. And then I'm gonna take this side and I am going to line it up on this side. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pick a place on my grid. It's not, it doesn't really matter what. Maybe I want it to be a little bit bigger. So I'm, I, I, my, I want my strip to be a little bit wider. So, but you can see I'm lining it up along with this grid and pressing it down. So for all practical purposes, my grid is, my, my strip is gonna be this big. Honestly, I want it to be a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna pull this up because it's masking paper. It comes up very easily. And I'm just gonna move it over just a little bit more. Now I'm on this dotted line and I'm gonna line it up with this dotted line over here. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with the space that I've got that I'm going to color. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Pretty in Pink ink and I'm gonna take my blending brush and I'm just gonna pick up some ink. I'm gonna swirl it around. I'm gonna tap off just a little bit. I don't even know if you guys can see this, but what I wanna do is I don't really wanna get any ink on this side, so I'm gonna be very careful to just stay right within that area. 
and we'll start out with my first layer of it. And actually, uh, I'm going to be careful. I'm going to, I'm going to attempt to be careful. But you always want to start off just a little bit because if you don't tap off or start off, you could end up with a darker spot and you don't want the spot to be darker. You want it to be even. So I'm going to fix that um, just because I'm going to add more color. But I want to make sure that I'm staying within these two strips that I've masked off. So I'm going to continue to do this. You can start to see I'm getting more and more color. Tap off again. Start adding more color. I really want it to get dark. And it doesn't take very long. It, you just need to be patient and layer it. And you can start to see how it's starting to splotch up just a little bit. It will dry even, but I'm gonna go ahead and keep continue to add color, staying within this area. And you saw that I was tapping off. I can actually use this color. I don't know if you can see it or not, but now I can take my brush and I can pick up some of that color. So I'm not really wasting my ink by tapping off. I just don't want a lot of ink right out of the gate um, onto my cardstock. Um, like you can see up here, it's very light up there, but I'm glad I did that just because I wanted to give you an example of it. But once I've done that, then I can go ahead and I can continue to add my color. And again, like I said, I'm trying to stay within. We're gonna do one more here, and then I'm gonna pick up that color, and then we're gonna go ahead and move on. But I would continue to do this mm, several more times just so that I can get the color intensity that I want. Let me pick up some of this over here. And I think I'm happy with that. I feel like I have less ink on this side. And I think part of my reasoning for that is um, because I'm worried about getting on this white cardstock. I should have used my thicker um, masking tape on that side. But I think it's good. I think I'm gonna be happy with that. So let me go ahead and give this one last swipe. And then we're gonna close this up. I'm going to get out. I'm gonna pick this up, move it out of the way. Um, it's important to make sure that you get your ink um, off your glass mat before you're working. Otherwise, you're going to get ink on your project. So I've got that all cleaned up. So we're good to go there. Now I can take this and I'm going to peel off this side and I'm going to peel off this side. And look how pretty that is. Move these out of the way. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp my focal point which is going to be my flower again. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get this all inked up with my Memento Black ink. And I thought I did. I've got ink on the bottom of my, my thumb. So I'm gonna just take my little chamois and clean that up. So we've got this all inked up. I'm gonna decide where I wanna line this up and I'm gonna have part of it on the um, strip and part of it off of the strip. So let me layer it about right here. Make sure I get a good connection that the ink transfers. Oh, so pretty. This is one of my favorite things to do. I just love this. All right, um, let me get this cleaned off and then we're gonna go ahead and do our thanks. This time I'll try to do a better job of getting my thanks straight. Um, instead of slanted, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna try. You might see my head though in order for me able to do this. So I've got this set up, and I'm gonna go down right here. Up, uh, still tilted. Isn't that crazy? It doesn't look like it's tilted when I go down, but oh well. Anyway, another tilted night. I don't know. My my sample's not tilted. Oh well. 
All right, so we've got that. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to take our little frame and we're gonna put our frame right over the top of it. Probably should have went up a little bit higher, but that, that works. All right, so good thing I've got my precision tip glue bottle. I'm gonna clean off the bottom of it. And then we're going to just put a tiny bit of glue right on the back, probably just a few little dots um, in the air, the, the bigger areas, because there's just not a lot of room here. And we'll do this so that I can get this adhered down. And then I think I'm gonna use my tweezers just to help me. Um, let's see, let's go this way so that my fingers aren't in the way. And we'll go ahead and put this down. All right. Let that set. And then we're going to take the linen thread again. And this time we're going to wrap this way. So I've got, let me see, I want to make sure I've got plenty enough room over here. We'll do it the exact same way we did it before. So I've got extra space over here. We'll wrap this once, twice. And I'm going to go down this way. Uh, ribbon snips are right here. Let's go ahead and do that. Get my knot tied so that the twine or the thread isn't moving around. And let's see. Then I can tie my bow and I can move it. So I'm not even worried about where the placement is right now because I'm gonna be able to move this. My focus right now is just getting myself um, a nice bow. So I'm gonna move this over just a little bit and I can go ahead and move this up. Again, all you have to do is bend the cardstock a little bit, get that centered the way that I want it. I'm gonna put my bow about right here so now I can tie it. All right, tighten this one up, I'm making my bow a little bit smaller. All right, now if I wanted my bow to just stay in place, I didn't really have that issue with the other one, but um, I want the bow to stay in place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a little glue dot with my take your pick roll it up into a little ball, and then I'll stick it right underneath here where the knot is, and then put the knot right over the top of it, and now my bow is going to stay in place. And I'll trim this up in just a second. I wanna get it on the card first. So let's go ahead and build out the rest of the card before we adhere that. So we're gonna fold the base in half. Basic white base. Get that burnished down. And then we're gonna take our um, Country Lace Pretty in Pink Designer Series Paper and go ahead and get it layered down. Actually, I think I'm gonna try to Looks like it's off just a tiny bit, not much. Oh, it's sliding, but I don't want it to slide too much. I don't want to get it, well, it's still sliding. All right, I'm just seeing a little bit of, oh, area that I feel like I need to just fix it. So there we go, got that, okay. Now what we're gonna do with this piece is we're gonna put dimensionals on it. So let me grab, oh, I was gonna show you. Um, I've used up all the dimensionals here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start utilizing all of this as more dimensionals. So I'm snipping away, no method to my madness. I'm just snipping, snipping. And then what I'll do is I'll just start to pull some pieces and place them back here. Nobody's gonna know, but I'm gonna have the dimension that I that I want as well. So let me pull this one off, put it over here in the corner, put some thread there, and then here's another corner. 
that I'll go ahead and use right here. Like I said, no method to my madness per se. Just want to make sure that I'm getting good dimension. And again, my thing is I don't like middle snap sag. So I've got um, plenty enough on here that I'm not going to have to worry about any sag um, on this. Let me see. Is that the top? Yeah, that's fine. All right. So let me pull these off. Maybe. Okay. Is that one off? Yep, that one's off. All right, now we're gonna center this in the middle of the card where we want it to go. I'm not pushing down yet because I wanna make sure I'm happy with my placement. Um, I think I wanna go over just a tiny bit more. Not a lot, but I probably shouldn't. Yeah, I think that's good. Now I'm gonna trim these off like so, and I'm gonna bring back in these, um, what did I call them? I called them the adhesive-backed pearl trio. And we're gonna go ahead and put some bling on here. So I'll use my take your pick to help me out. We're gonna do one down here, and one up here, and another one right here. Okay. There you go. Now we have card number three done. These, these little adhesive dots really like me. <laughs> they want to stay in the front and center. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna bring them all back for you. And I still haven't found that little round circle. No telling where it went. But this was card number three that we made. And then we have card number two that we made with the tilted things, missing circle. And then let me see, oh, here is the first card that we made. So pretty, all of these, so pretty, and really so much fun to make. But they're all a little bit different, right? We've got some ink blending, we've got some embossing, we um, painted with the inks. It was a lot of fun. Let me come back to see you guys just to say thank you for joining me tonight. I, I love coming and being here with you guys. Um, this is a to-go class, so if you are interested, do go out to uh, my website, look up the information for that, um, and you'll get the kits for placing an order in my online store utilizing the host code. Thank you all for joining me um, with this video. I appreciate everyone and um, I love sharing with all of you and I hope that if you like what I do, you will like and share as well. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe to my channel. But I come to you every Thursday night with something new and I hope you enjoy the cards that I'm creating. So with that, I'm going to say good night and I will see you guys next week. Take care. Bye.